My CPU is suffering from some problems. And no, it's not because it's really dirty. Oh no, I need to clean it. But it is currently suffering from a gamer's worst nightmare. And that is a CPU bottleneck. But before I get into the meat and potatoes of this video, let me know in the comments, have you ever had an issue with your PC? And also put down how you manage to fix these issues. So my PC is currently suffering from a CPU bottleneck. And this sucks as I paid a lot of money for my RTX 4080. And my 3950X is currently holding it back in a lot of games at 1440p. This can be pretty annoying. And if you've ever had a CPU bottleneck, you'd understand. There are two different types of CPU bottlenecks in my opinion. The first one, which is the one that I'm suffering from right now, and it's the kind of not as severe as the other. And it's simply that the single thread performance of the CPU cannot keep up with your GPU at your resolution. The 3950X is not going to be fully utilized in pretty much any game out there, thanks for its 32 threads. But the single core performance is what's holding back my RTX 3080. The other more severe bottleneck in my opinion is when your CPU is being utilized at 100%. This is not good at all as it reduces gaming performance drastically, introducing stuttering, frame drops, and just general system unresponsiveness. Also, if your CPU has been utilized at 100% as well, you can get weird loading problems. I know GTA is quite prone to this on dual core CPUs, so you can get weird issues like that as well. So what is a bottleneck, I hear you ask? And that is a good question. Essentially, what a bottleneck is, is a factor that is limiting your PC's performance. In a lot of gaming PCs, this is the graphics card, and that's a good thing, as the graphics card is being fully utilized, and it's the component that leads to more gaming performance. Other more common bottlenecks include CPU bottlenecks, which is what I'm suffering from, if I haven't said it already in this video, but CPU bottlenecks can be holding back GPU performance, which is never good in a gaming rig. And CPU bottlenecks occur when the CPU is too weak for your graphics card. So say if you had an i3 CPU and an RTX 4090, you'd be seeing a CPU bottleneck. And with all PCs, there is a bottleneck somewhere because if there were no bottlenecks, you'd theoretically have infinite performance and infinite frame rates, which I know I'd love personally, but that's not reality so there has to be a limitation somewhere if you are suffering from a cpu bottleneck there are a few ways that you can reduce these even without changing hardware if you're playing at 1440p like me maybe upping to 4k might be a good idea for you this is because the cpu has to do less work as it's got to prepare less frames for the gpu therefore it's been utilized less and you're becoming more GPU bound. I had to do this back in 2019 when I had an i5-6500 and a GTX 1660Ti. I was playing at 1080p back then and I had to up a few games to 1440p just to get around the awful CPU bottleneck. I know upping the resolution isn't always the best method, especially if you've got a weaker GPU, but if your CPU is really holding back your GPU and you're getting weird graphical glitches, and stuff not loading in because the CPU is fully utilized, upping your render resolution might be a good option here. If you don't want to up the render resolution, that's okay because using a newer API like DirectX 12 might help you out. This is because DirectX 12, when compared to its predecessor, DirectX 11 has less CPU overhead. Granted, in some cases, this is fairly negligible and you won't see it at all, but in some games, it can help out. I know it does help out quite a bit in Fortnite when compared to using regular DirectX 11, so it does depend on the game. So if you're using a weaker CPU and a relatively modern GPU, anything that's been made within the past eight, seven years, I'd like to say, DirectX 12 could be a good option of reducing some of that CPU usage. Another setting that you could lower in game, and this does depend on the game if it's got that setting available, and this is lowering the draw distance. I know in a game like Fortnite, this does drastically help out, especially on weaker CPUs, even on something as old as the i7-3770, which was released 11 years ago. And this is because this setting allows the CPU to load in less assets, therefore decreasing your CPU usage. And this could be the difference between a horrible stuttery mess and a nice and relatively smooth gameplay experience. 
And if none of these work or they don't satisfy your needs, it might be time to look for a brand new CPU. Whether this is with a different platform, like I'm looking for, more on that in a bit, or whether you're on something like an i3 and you want to upgrade to something like an i7, the cost can vary with this. So you'll have to evaluate whether the upgrade is worth it for you, especially when you're going out to spend your hard-earned cash. So look at me for an example. I could easily upgrade to a 5950X. I don't want to get the 5800X 3D because I do a lot of productivity on this system and that CPU isn't particularly great in Adobe Premiere Pro. If I were to upgrade to something like a 5950X, I'd be getting a very marginal upgrade of my 3950X. There's a lot of 50Xs in this video. But the point being is it's not that worth it to me, in my opinion. I might as well save up for a couple of years and do a full platform upgrade there, and I'll get the benefits of DDR5 and PCIe Gen 5 as well. So if you can manage your bottleneck for now, Try keeping your current CPU and just managing some of the settings and you should be okay. But if your CPU is pegged at 100% and these settings haven't worked, it might be time to look for a PC upgrade. So with these tips, you've hopefully at least reduced your CPU bottleneck and it should be performing slightly better, I hope. But if it isn't, it might be time to look for a newer CPU. Why is this flickering? Not doing it now. I need a new light. Yeah. Moving back to the video, my Ryzen 9 3950X is a great CPU, especially for productivity tasks. In Adobe Premiere Pro, it performs great, scrubbing through the timeline, exporting, it works totally fine. I record on a Sony and it records in 4K 25fps at 100 megabits. So this footage is pretty beefy and it should look pretty good but the 3950x scrubs through it totally fine and as i said exporting these videos depending on how many effects i put in them it usually exports at lower than the video's length so that's pretty good in my opinion but for gaming these older zen 2 cpus are looking a bit tired now especially when you pair them with something like an rtx 3080 as for upgrades I'm not too sure what to do now. I think I might just wait a couple of years and move back to Intel, mainly because Intel does have slightly better Premiere Pro performance. I know I'm already getting great performance in Premiere Pro, but Intel does have their QuickSync engine, and this does help out a lot with playback in the video timeline and exporting as well. So who doesn't like extra performance, eh? So I'm thinking in a couple of years, I might just upgrade to whatever the newest i9 then. It might be 15th gen, 16th gen, if they keep the same naming scheme. So yeah, I'll probably upgrade to Intel and I'll get the benefits of DDR5 and PCIe Gen 5 as well. So I'll have faster storage and I'll have better system responsiveness with the extra speeds of DDR5 too. So if you like this one, like it, stay subscribed for more tech content. And you might be able to see the upgrade of this in two to three years whenever I decide to upgrade it. So with that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.